Hi, welcome back to my next video and my topic is today hepatic keratitis. Let's start with introduction. Herpes viruses are double strain DNA viruses. There are three subfamilies of herpes viruses, alpha, beta and gamma. The human viruses included in alpha subfamily are herpes simplex virus type 1, 2 and varicella zoster virus. HSV keratitis has multiple presentations that can be challenging for the clinician. The main corneal manifestations include infectious epithelial keratitis, neurotrophic keratopathy, necrotizing stromal keratitis, immune stromal keratitis, and endotelitis. To treat HSV keratitis successfully, the clinician must recognize the infectious as well as immune components of the keratitis. And the most common treatment error is an underutilization of topical corticosteroids for immune stromal keratitis. Pathogenesis. Chronology of infection. So initial corneal infection starts with the virus, which is then replicates in the epithelium. They then travel through the ciliary uh, and ophthalmic nerves to the trigeminal ganglion in a retrograde fashion, where the virus establishes a latent infection that can last for the lifetime of the host. Stress-induced stimuli periodically reactivate the virus and reactivated virus travel through the ophthalmic and ciliary nerves in an anterograde fashion and reach back to the initial infection. And this can uh, lead to renewed corneal infection. Like this is activation. Those are sunlight, trauma, contact lens wear, heat, abnormal body temperature, hormonal change, emotional stress, other infectious disease, low common medication, as well as immunocompromised and trigeminal nerve manipulation. Clinical presentation. Manifestation and classification of hepatic keratitis includes epithelial involvement, which at the same time characterizes with infectious and neurotrophic epithelial keratitis. Stromal involvement includes immune stromal and nucleotizing stromal keratitis, and endothelium involvement includes endothelitis. Let's start with infectious epithelial keratitis. The classification of this type of keratitis is uh, based on the clinical presentation with cornea vesicles, dendritic, geographic, and marginal ulcers. General symptoms would be lacrimation, photophobia, irritation, and blurred vision, as well as pain, basically the most common cornea syndrome symptoms. So punctate, punctate keratitis, the clinical presentation with cornea, corneal vesicles, and this lesion begin as punctate whitish opaque plaques of swollen epithelial cells, um, and they are stained negatively with fluorescein. And here on this image, we can see that the cornea vesicles have coalesced and the raised appearance indicates that ulceration has not yet occurred. This is another sample. Here we can see a branching vesicular lesion of HSV keratitis where confluent fluorescein staining centrally indicates true ulceration. And in this image, we can see a slit beam of same lesion which shows isolated epithelial involvement. Here we can see a dendritic keratitis of infectious epithelial keratitis and the plaques, they enlarge and form branching dendritis. So there are central dendritic ulcer, paracentral dendritic ulcers, and in this uh, photo we can see multiple dendritic ulcers on the surface of the cornea. Then, um, the earliest stage of dendritic keratitis characterized of epithelial keratitis. Those are small punctate vesicular lesions and this can be seen uh, in the epithelium. Then later coalesce, it, uh, coalesce into plaques that eventually enlarge and form uh, dendrites. And it's rare to see this early stage uh, in the patient. Usually the patient comes already with a really uh, intense epithelial keratitis with a dendritic uh, image um, on the surface of the cornea. So then um, 
we can see a real dendritic ulcer and it happens usually one week or even more after first uh, infection, initial infections and here we can see a fluorescein staining over time. At the beginning we can see a really good demarcated dendritic ulcer which then later after one minute can uh, give an impression of a bigger ulcer and after three minutes we can see a real stain spreading. And here the stain moves into the surrounding epithelium, giving a false impression of the size of the ulcer. Geographic ulcers of infectious epithelial keratitis, uh, some of the dendrites enlarge into geographic ulcers. And those ulcers might have an amoeboid ulcer shape and like dendrites, uh, they can be stained with rose bengal. And here we can see um, swollen epithelial borders and in this particular image, we can see that dendritic ulcer extends centrally. And also in other clinical samples of uh, geographic ulcers, which usually occurs when the epithelialized cells around the dendritic ulcer are cast off. And uh, here we can see those cells and it's really rare. And here is a large geographic ulcer. Then we continue with marginal ulcers. Um, those are resulted from active viral disease. And here we can see the limbal injection as well as anterior stromal infiltrate. And here is a fluorescein staining which reveals ulceration. And so what we have to remember that marginal ulcer is a very uncommon and uh, mostly confused with staphylococcal marginal disease. And um, without antiviral therapy, marginal ulcer of uh, those type of keratitis can progress and mostly it progresses centrally. In this table, we can see a differentiation between um, HSV marginal keratitis and staphylococcal marginal keratitis. So features which, um, which should be uh, taken into consideration for the differential diagnosis are etiology, epithelial defect progression, limbal injection, um, a lucid interval between limbus and ulcer, neovascularization and blepharitis, and of course, uh, location. So we can see here that herpes keratitis is mostly progresses centrally, um, has a more limbal injection and a lucid interval between limbus and ulcer is not occurred, then neovascularization can be and blepharitis um, can be or may not be and location can be in any meridian as, um, as compared to staphylococcal marginal keratitis, the etiology is mostly immunologic response to staphylococcal antigen and epithelial defect uh, is mostly absent or may occur in the late stages. The progression can be uh, circumferentially and limbal in injection is not that active um, as in case of herpetic keratitis. Then um, neovascularization mostly is not the case and blepharitis is, is usually the case and location is mostly at 2, 4, 8 and 10 o'clock. Then uh, sequelae of infectious epithelial keratitis. So it starts as a dendritic ulcer or geographic ulcer and can be with complete resolution of the infection uh, lesion without residual evidence of prior infection. In case of a stromal scarring, um, the scars are usually gray-white uh, with a subepithelial opacities, can be also characterized with ghost figures or footprints, and or the patient might have a dense stromal scarring accompanied by thinning and decreased vision. And in case of stromal disease, it can lead to a really um, acute uh, necrotizing keratitis with a true viral infection of the stroma, or might be also characterized with immune keratitis, uh, which is mediated by antibody complement reactions to viral antigen. So um, here on this image, we can see a subepithelial scarring, uh, which is characterized with ghost figures. Here is uh, another type of subepithelial scarring, and here we can see a ground glass 
type of scarring. Neurotrophic keratopathy. Uh, the classification uh, is a punctate epithelial erosions and a neurotrophic ulcer. And clinically, it um, can be a reason of a chronic use of topical medications, impaired corneal innervation, and um, can be a result uh, of due to decreased tear secretion. Characteristics characterized with a round or square shape with smooth borders and a rolled up epithelium. The stroma and the ulcer bed has a great wide opacification and uh, may have a thickened borders and the complication can be a stromal scarring, neovascularization, necrosis, perforation and of course due to um, damaged epithelium the patient might have also secondary bacterial infection. In this slide, um, there are presented features of infectious uh, epithelial keratitis compared to neurotrophic ulcer based on the etiology, location, and morphology, as well as staining, treatment, and course. So usually, uh, infectious epithelial keratitis results within two weeks and um, compared to neurotrophic keratitis, which can be chronic and also can occur after infectious epithelial keratitis. And in case when you um, have infectious epithelial keratitis with la which lasts more than 14 days, then you would suspect already that the patient has a neurotrophic keratitis. So those are clinical samples. As I said already, neurotrophic ulcer is characterized with round or oval ulcers with gray thickened and rolled up margins. In this photo, we can see a central ulcer with a smooth borders. Here we can see a thickened and rolled up margins of the neurotrophic ulcer. Just let me remind you that neurotrophic keratitis can be also called metaherpetic keratitis. And in this ca uh, case, uh, we can see, as I said already, thickened and rolled up margins. And this is a case of a neurotrophic keratolysis with necrotizing uh, stroma. Additionally, the patient has here advancing neovascularization. Stromal keratitis, the types of stromal keratitis are necrotizing and immune stromal keratitis. Uh, and may also present as limbal vasculitis, immune ring of vesely, necrotic interstitial uh, keratitis, as well as endotelitis with and without trabeculitis. And this can be also um, clinically presented with uh, increased intraocular pressure. So necrotizing stroma keratitis results from a direct viral invasion of the stroma and the clinical findings can be a necrosis, ulceration, dense infiltration of the stroma with an overlying epithelial defect and severe inflammation can lead to destructive interstromal inflammation which requires the treatment with a high dose anti-inflammatory and antiviral medication and the severe inflammation may lead to thinning and perforation within a short period of time. Immunostromal keratitis um, can be due to viral antigen within the stroma and clinical findings are stromal infiltration, haze and stromal edema, punctate lesions in mid-stroma as well as neovascularization which can be sectoral, single font of vessel can be or can be just a complete neovascularization of the cornea. And immune reaction would be characterized clinically with immune ring, this is a vessel ring, which can be singular or multiple. And it is most commonly found in the mid stroma of the central or paracentral cornea. And the neovascularization also can lead to lipid keratopathy, which can lead also to further scarring and loss of vision. And as a note, please remember that immune stromal keratitis may present days or years after an episode of infectious epithelial keratitis. And here are some clinical samples of immune stromal keratitis. In this slide, we can see um, a few more clinical samples of immune stromal keratitis. And here the patient has a um, double immune ring of vesely. And on the second photo, you can see a fine punctate opacities in the mid stroma. And on the third photo, you can see again a vessel ring with the additional anterior stromal 
scarring from the previous HSV disease. In this slide, you can see the severe stromal inflammation and neovascularization with a lipid keratopathy um, in patients with a history of previous HSV immune stromal keratitis. On the second photo, you can see a heavy lipid deposition with some neovascularization, and this is very typical um, herpes simplex keratitis with immune stromal reaction. And on the third image, we can see a chronic stromal scar, and in this case, the patient could uh, profit from deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty in case if the patient has, of course, a healthy endothelium. The fourth type of herpes simplex keratitis is uh, endotelitis, the pathogenesis of which is unclear, but there is also an opinion that this is an immunologic reaction. The management of this type of keratitis can be uh, mostly, with topical, mostly with atopical corticosteroids, and clinical findings include stromal and epithelial edema. There are no infiltrates. The patient has keratic precipitates and might also have iritis. So classification of uh, endotelitis includes distiform, diffuse, and linear type. Distiform endotelitis, this is the most common presentation of endotelitis uh, with the uh, following clinical findings uh, such as photophobia, moderate ocular discomfort, limbal injection, iritis with uh, keratic precipitates, visual acuity is reduced depending on the location of the edema. The patient might also have round or disc-shaped area of stromal edema. Uh, the stroma may also have a ground glass appearance and the patient um, clearly have a clear demarcation line between involved and uninvolved cornea. In this slide, uh, I presented a few clinical samples of distiform endotelitis. Uh, on the first photo, the patient has um, a central round area of stromal haze caused by edema of the stroma, and the edema results from an immune response um, at the level of endothelium as evidenced by the keratic precipitates um, in the central part of the cornea. On the second photo, we can see a slit beam, which shows that the stroma is free of infiltrate and keratic precipitates can be seen under um, the area of edema. And on the third photo, we can see a distiform endotelitis with a chronic stromal and epithelial edema, which is here caused by severe form of endotelitis. Diffuse endotelitis, this is a rare presentation of endotelitis. Uh, clinical findings include um, those common symptoms which I listed previously. Additionally, the patient may have a visual acuity reduced due to diffuse stromal edema and failure in controlling the inflammation can lead to scarring, neovascularization and persistent edema and as a result, uh, loss of vision. The next type of uh, endotelitis is a linear endotelitis, which is uh, characterized with a well-demarcated line between the area of edematous and non-edematous cornea with a keratic precipitates located at the leading edge of the edema. And here we can see a few clinical samples uh, of a linear endotelitis with uh, some advancing stromal and epithelial edema. Uh, here we have also a microcystic edema and here is 360 degrees of peripheral stroma, uh, stromal and epithelial edema. Laboratory investigations. In case of typical presentation, of course, general clinical examination is enough in order to make a proper diagnosis. And in case of atypical presentation, lab analysis are needed. Those are GMs staining, polymerase chain reaction, viral culture and immunological tests. And PCR is a very useful diagnostic tool with high sensitivity. I personally prefer to have these kind of lab analysis in case of atypical presentation. And the sensitivity of this test is almost equal to viral culture and the results are obtained much earlier. With this slide, I would like to conclude my presentation since uh, the therapy of herpetic keratitis will be covered in the upcoming video. Thank you for watching. Till the next video, stay positive, stay healthy. Bye.